Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. This is AWS reInvent, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Wikibon's continuous wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this event. This is our flagship production. We go out to the events, as you know. <coughs> we extract the signal from the noise. Bring you the people that really are part of the ecosystem, the executives at the hosting company, uh, the practitioners, the customers that are actually using the technologies, and try to paint a picture for you, our audience, what's happening at this show. Tim Saunders is here. He is the CTO and co-founder of CardFlight, a mobile payment platform. Tim, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dave, uh, and Jeff. Thanks for having us uh, today. Yeah, Great so AWS reInvent, uh, were you here last year at reInvent? Uh, no, this is our first time being here, and uh, yeah, very excited. To, yeah, us uh, too. We didn't part. have theCUBE here last year. We did, uh, in June, we did the, uh, the AWS Summit at Moscone, but it's quite an event. What do you, what do you, what's the vibe for you guys? Uh, yeah, it's great. Like we're uh, one of AWS's customers. Uh, so as a startup, you know, it's very, it's great to be a part of some of the sessions. Uh, we're going to re-architect some of our system after being in some of the boot camps and sessions. So it's been very helpful for us as a company architecturally on the back end. I mean, you got to love that, the way that you know, AWS gives back to the startups that have been yeah. uh, helping it get off the ground, right? Good visibility, we've seen tons of startups you know, in, in sessions, up on the stage. I mean, you know, alongside with the big companies like Netflix, which you'd expect, but, uh, but that's good. So how have you taken advantage of that? Um, it's just in terms of some of the sessions that you've been doing, just some of the action coming on theCUBE. Yep, <laughs> yeah, well so, uh, you know, part of our uh, push for our company is we're going to become PCI compliant. So we, because we process our, our credit card data. So, um, you know, some of the sessions have really helped around security, encryption, um, and making PCI compliance really easy and simple for us to run. So talk a little bit about card flight and some of the trends that are driving your industry. Yeah, so card flight, uh, we make uh, mobile payments really simple uh, and easy for developers to get uh, mobile payments up and running within their custom applications. So uh, three easy steps with card flight. Uh, the first one is we, uh, we provide a, uh, like a piece of hardware, a mag Hold that right up. magnetic right, yeah. uh, encrypted magstripe reader, um, allows us to um, integrate that into inside your own custom application. We provide an SDK uh, with a few lines of code you can integrate into our reader. We uh, estimate under an hour for you to get mobile payments up and running. And thirdly, on our back end, we uh, connect with over 23 different payment processes. Um, so it allows us to be that middleware play in between your custom application and the uh, payment processes which people have come to love over the years. So the hardware just connects to the audio socket of a... Uh, yeah, currently our, our first uh, version of our hardware right. connects directly to our audio jacket. Uh, we're in the process of looking at a few other versions, um, but yeah. Okay, so mobile payments, obviously, big shift, really disruptive in the industry. Talk about that disruption, Trump. Talk about the drivers in your business. Yeah, so uh, obviously payments in general is a, is a massive industry. Uh, I think e-commerce over the last decade has been a massive industry, um, but obviously mobile trend is definitely becoming a huge uh, sector in mobile payments. And we really feel that there's a market there, and you can see from some of our um, competitors and several other people in the same space that mobile payments is really taking off uh, in the years to come. So talk about how you're different from, say, Square. Um, so the thing with Square is uh, we really love Square. They're a great company. Um, the only thing is that with Square that you have to use their app, you use their reader, and you have to use their back-end payment processor. So there's no uh, customization outside of that with Square. You have to use their app, their reader, and their back-end processing system, which is great for an SMB business. If you're selling um, at a food store or selling art out the back of your trunk, it's really great for those sort of vendors. But if you're a mid-sized level, level business and you have a, a custom application which allows you to process mobile payments, um, Square doesn't really offer that as, uh, as part of their solution. So that's where we really find our niche market is allowing developers to integrate mobile payments really simple and really easy into that, inside their application. So it's all about the SDK and being able to customize that. Yeah, so why did you guys start CardFlight? We should have started there. Um, so we had, a, uh, we had another startup which we were uh, previously working on, my co-founder and I, and um, we were trying to look around for a solution exactly like CardFlight. Um, like we said, I could, I could find great solutions for SMB, out of the box solutions, and I could find solutions for like top and high end um, companies, T1 merchants, but I couldn't find nothing which was uh, easy to integrate, seamlessly integrate as a developer 
um, which is cheap and simple for me to get up and running really quickly. So um, we basically hacked up on a weekend um, an SDK, and we thought, well, hey, it really feels like there's a business here to be made. Um, so that's how we became Cardflight. So we pivoted from our existing company to become Cardflight. So, uh, Tim, I'm, I'm checking out your website, um, and I'm looking at some of the customers you've got, uh, yeah. Event Farm, LearnVest, and some others. Maybe could you walk us through uh, maybe a customer example, and, and talk about the thing I'm interested in is, you mentioned you know, being able to integrate with their own application. Why is that so important? What, what, you know, what's the value of that beyond uh, what, what something like Square does where you're not able to do that? How does that deliver value for somebody like Event Farm or LearnVest or other customers? Yeah, so uh, someone like Event Farm, where we have uh, several uh, event management companies, um, they're basically selling uh, tickets at their events, and they have an iPad service. Um, and so they have a custom application which they've built themselves, um, which is, looks and feels like Event Farm. And so this Cardflight has allowed them to stay with inside their own app to, to process those payments without having to switch to another application like, Car, uh, like Square or Intuit or uh, one of those other um, companies which offer that. So it allows a company like Event Farm, which is to have a custom, consumer facing uh, iPad solution. So customers can stay in that one app, have the same look and feel uh, with inside their app and process the card present payments there and then. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds like one of the benefits being just the way you, you present your company. You've got this, it's, it's branded with your company's, uh, you know, it's your own application. Uh, it almost gives it a little bit more of that professional feel. Is that, is that one of the benefits? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like our target market is uh, mid-level businesses, companies that have their own uh, custom app. Mm -hmm. However, their, their core competency isn't focusing on mobile payments, uh, encryption, end-to-end -end encryption, mm -hmm. PCR compliance, security, we factor that all out for those businesses as a service, so we allow them to um, process card present payments inside their apps and get that up and running really quickly and really simple. Mm -hmm. um, so let's shift a little bit to AWS. Are, are you guys at this point completely on AWS? Um, what's kind of the, uh, the state of your infrastructure right now? Yeah, so we, uh, we started out with one of uh, Amazon's uh, competitors, AWS's competitors, and uh, one of our huge factors with Cardflight is security mm. and PCR compliance. So we went on a bit of a journey as a uh, development team to work out um, the best cloud solution for PCI compliance. Um, handling PCI compliance for a startup is a huge deal in itself. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to find the best cloud server which allowed us to um, reduce our scope down to p the smallest amount of PCI compliance scope and the amount of effort as us developers to focus on what we do well, which is mobile payments, and for the cloud server to focus on what they do well, which is PCI compliance. So we uh, went on a fact-finding mission. We found that Amazon AWS allowed us to um, leverage a lot of their infrastructure and processes for PCI compliance. Um, there was nothing we had to set up or no uh, NDA we had to sign. It was just out-of-the-box solution for us for PCI compliance. Uh, AWS have this shared responsibility model. So it really allowed us to factor out the PCI compliance scope down to as small as possible unit of work for us as a startup. Mm -hmm. uh, so for our audience members who might not be that familiar with PCI compliance, can you kind of explain a little bit about what that is and what makes that difficult? Um, and then you mentioned that shared responsibility model uh, with Amazon. Can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so PCI compliance is a uh, standard um, which uh, every company that basically processes credit card data, uh, whether it be uh, MagStripe data, encrypted or decrypted data, has to be certified by this long list of rules that you know, you got uh, certain passwords need to be re reset, you got logging of uh, firewall transactions, you got logging, it's the whole massive document list of rules. Um, and it's a standard for companies that are processing credit card data. Um, and allows us to say that we're secure, your credit card information isn't going to be released to other companies that, um, you know, hopefully we don't get, you know, infiltrated in that sort of way. So it's really helped, PCI really helps a company be a standard of level and saying, yep, we're PCI, mm -hmm. we process your credit card data, and we're seen as the standard which um, the industry is renowned for. Um, and so with AWS, it's really allowed us to, um, with their shared responsibility model, is that AWS um, focuses on a lot of their infrastructure, um, a lot of their process. So we've factored out our system into three different sections, our API section, our web section, and our PCI compliance section. And our PCI compliance section uh, focus on, uh, on our credit card data processing. So with the shared responsibility, it's allowed us to you know, spawn up AMIs, um, allow them to um, uh, process them into different availability zones and different regions around the world. 
and for us to scale up and down really quickly using that shared responsibility so that we know that a massive section of our system is already checked off for PCI compliance. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not another thing for our QSA uh, auditors to have to focus on, but we already know out of the box um, that it's already passed PCI compliance. And for a startup, that's brilliant. You know, For us to spend hours of time focusing on other sections which already has been covered, it's been great. So tell us more about the, the company. Where are you guys at? I mean, how did you get funding? And you know, where are you at with funding? What's the headcount? Uh, yeah, so we're a uh, New York based uh, startup. Uh, even though my accent's uh, Australian, we're a New York based. Um, and we're a team of eight of uh, seven of us, uh, soon to be eight, start of the year. And um, yeah, we're a seed stage uh, funded startup. And um, yeah, we're, we're basically building out our product you know, for the next 12 months and, and uh, basically proving our business model. Uh, we believe there's a massive market there for us in the industry. And um, yeah, we're excited for what the future holds. Have you, so you haven't started doing a, 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 an A round raise? No, so we're probably uh, looking at doing a uh, Series A um, probably uh, this time next year sometime. Uh -huh. so, uh, but we're currently in a, uh, what we call a private beta phase. So we want to have uh, you know, great focus on great customer support, uh, making sure we're ironing out some of the major issues with our system, um, and just ensuring a, a, a really seamless process for developers to get up and running really quickly, onboard them inside their mobile applications. And the, and the early customers of, you know, that you've, you've approached or have approached you sort of recognize some of the limitations of existing platforms, want to do that level of customization, so what's their feedback been so far? Yeah, so uh, you know, we have several hundred developers on our pipeline of uh, wanting to use a solution like CarbFlight, and a lot of their feedback has been, you know, we're, we're, uh, we want a custom ability to process mobile payments inside our app, and you know, they're very excited that finally there's a solution like this, um, and it allows us, allows our company to, back, to integrate with the existing payment processes that they already have. So they don't need to go away and use a separate payment processor, but they can, let's say they're already using First Data or TSIS as their payment processor, we already integrate with them, so there's no need for them to go away and do a separate transaction with another payment processor. So we've had great feedback, you know, since we've been launched about uh, six, nine months ago. Um, so yeah, we're really excited for the customers we've got on board, and um, yeah. So uh, Tim, Jim, my partner John Furry's been asking people all week if they, if they had to put a bumper sticker on this show, uh, you know, reinvent 2013, what would it be? And so I'll ask you, what, from your standpoint, you know, first time at reinvent, obviously a lot of buzz here, a lot of developers, a lot, a lot of innovation. Uh, I think you've seen some of the keynotes, I'm not sure if you saw this morning, but uh, what, what's your bumper sticker for reInvent 2013? Um, I think my bumper sticker would be, uh, the best is yet to come. <laughs> I really, really, really believe, you know, uh, reInvent's uh, innovative, um, pushing the boundaries of some of the cloud space, um, and I really believe the best is yet to come for AWS, and as a company we believe we want to leverage some of that, uh, the stuff that is to come. Some of the announcement this weekend is really going to help us as a company as we grow and scale. So we really believe, you know, if I was, there was a bumper sticker, you would say the best is yet to come. That's a good one. Yeah, so it's, it's early days here. We, we, we've been covering this, and we, we've talked a lot about, you know, the, the trillion dollar market opportunity that Amazon's going after. So um, they're just barely scratching that surface. We're estimating, you know, three to four billion this year. So a long way to go. So Tim, uh, good luck, congratulations on you know, getting off the ground and, and having a, what appears to be a very successful pivot. Uh, we'll be watching, and thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff and Dave, and uh, theCUBE, and uh, yeah, thank you for letting us be a part of it. That's right. great, thank you. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. We're live from Las Vegas. This is reInvent 2013, and this is theCUBE.